Hello, my name is Dr. Damon Williams. I am the author of Strategic Diversity Leadership and the Chief Diversity Officer. And it's my pleasure to be with the University of Pittsburgh Swanson College of Engineering. I was asked to speak to you about diversity and diversity leadership and about creating real, meaningful, and impactful change efforts on campus. What I've found is that there's five key ingredients that are so important to driving diversity efforts forward. One, I think that you have to approach the work with a real focus on questioning the world, trying to understand why we are not getting the diversity outcomes we want, why is the campus climate not where we want it, what are some of the challenges that are facing us in terms of getting our faculty involved, how can we enable all of our students, irrespective of background, to be successful. Diversity change efforts begin materially with the process of asking questions. The second thing that I think is important is as you're going into the effort and you're trying to build out solutions, you have to find solutions anywhere that they exist. In some instances, the solution may be at another department on campus. In some instances, the solution may exist in the literature. In other instances, the solution may exist at another institution. But you have to seek out ideas and bring those ideas into where you're trying to move a diversity agenda to truly make change happen. The third thing, diversity leaders, strategic diversity leaders, innovators in this space are always operating with a bias towards action. And they're doing things. They're experimenting, creating new initiatives, new activities, new types of projects, trying to see what works. Not just doing things randomly, but testing them and running a pilot. And once you figure out that pilot can be successful, ultimately making a commitment to scaling out and driving out on it. The next criterion I think is so important is that innovators have to get into other innovation spaces. I think it's essential to get to different conferences where diversity ideas and diversity change efforts are being talked about. The National Association of Diversity Officers in Higher Education. We're recording. I want to go back and cut that again. Okay. I think it's important for diversity leaders to engage in innovative spaces. Uh, for example, going to national conferences like the National Association of Diversity Officers in Higher Education, uh, or attending the National Conference on Race and Ethnicity, or perhaps the American Association of College and Universities uh, High Impact Practices Conference. But engaging in spaces where diversity change efforts diversity leadership efforts are being talked about, where you can be deeply taking in some of those ideas. And so in this instance for the College of Engineering, it's moving outside of the College of Engineering space, perhaps, and going into other spaces. The other key dynamic that I believe to be so important, in addition to questioning, in addition to finding solutions across space and time, in addition to having a bias towards action, in addition to scaling up on ideas, in addition to being in the company of other innovators, it takes leaders who are courageous. It takes leaders who are willing to move in novel directions that in some ways cut against the grain of tradition, that elevate their hand and say, hey, I think we can do some things differently in terms of casting a broad net uh, to look at uh, new candidates for diversity. Uh, it's asking the question, hey, maybe we can teach this introductory course not in two course sequences, but maybe we need to teach it in three course sequences to ensure not that we erode quality, but that more students are able to master the content and ultimately are able to achieve higher level results. Uh, maybe it's asking the question, how does cultural competence become a part of the leadership framework for how all students are being prepared? Because what we know is when our students graduate from our institutions, they go into a diverse workplace. They go into a workplace where they're gonna be working in groups and teams. And as a result, the more that we can help them to have those skills, not just analytically, not just in terms of ideation and problem solving, not just in terms of digital engagement, but also those abilities to lead and follow in teams. And that requires cultural competence, socio-emotional intelligence, the ability to work uh, across boundaries and to truly find a pathway to collaboration and understanding with individuals of diverse backgrounds. Those are some ideas that I think are really important to master to truly drive a diversity innovation agenda in your school or college. My name is Damon Williams. I'm the author of Strategic Diversity Leadership and the Chief Diversity Officer. And I want to talk about the process of creating a departmental diversity plan. One of the things that we know to be so important in creating that plan is first, it has to begin with an intentionality that the plan is being designed to achieve meaningful results. So many plans spend so much time in the analysis, 
so much time in the rationale, so much time in the articulation of definitions, so much time in the articulation of frameworks that they don't build into the plan some of the key dynamics that have to be there in order for the plan to be successful. And I want to talk about those things today. One, you need a very clear framework of action. So what are the various dimensions that you're going to build your plan out around? Is there going to be an aspect of it that talks about student outreach and recruitment? Is there going to be a part of it that talks about faculty development? Is there going to be a part of it that talks about creating a campus climate of inclusion? Is there going to be a part of it that talks about how we infuse diversity and diverse ideas into research and scholarship? But creating a clear framework of action is essential. Then, inside that framework, it's also important to think about what is the goal? What is the quantitative goal that you would like to accomplish inside of that framework? And then, what are some of the other indicators that you need to be tracking and measuring to be able to judge success over time? For example, ultimately, you may put in place a departmental plan that is designed to increase the number of women on your faculty or the number of underrepresented minorities on your faculty. That may be the ultimate outcome measure that you're looking to track. But the question becomes, what are some of the lead indicators that you need to also be tracking to ensure that you are moving in that direction? So, for example, how many uh, points of contact did you have with diverse individuals in the recruitment process? How many conferences did you go to? How many applicants did you get? How many outreach phone calls did you get? Uh, tracking and monitoring these things as a part of a more rigorous search process ultimately become a part of ensuring and helping yourself to get to that ultimate outcome of having a more diverse uh, a group of candidates that are interviewing and ultimately that are hiring. To stay with that idea, it's not only having a framework, not only having the indicators, but also thinking through what are the key tactics that you need to put in place to move an agenda forward. Let's stay with this idea of faculty diversification. One of the first points that I think is so important as you think about faculty diversification is how do you develop a faculty diversity rationale statement? At the University of Wisconsin-Madison, one of the things we did, myself and the Vice Provost for Faculty Affairs, is we partnered and developed a committee to establish a faculty diversity rationale statement. In that statement, we defined what we meant by diversity. In this instance, when we talked about faculty diversity, we were talking about individuals who were diverse in terms of underrepresented minority backgrounds. We were talking about individuals who were diverse in terms of gender, uh, and not only women who were underrepresented in certain fields of study like STEM or business and other areas, but also in some instances we were defining gender diversity as male meaning the number of men that were present in the faculty in the nursing department, where they were very underrepresented. But beyond those social characteristics of diversity, we also talked about diversity of research agenda. And in this instance, we really tailored that definition to talk about placing a premium on those individuals who brought a diversity-themed scholarly agenda to the department because we believe that that was a part of strengthening our competitive advantage. For example, someone who maybe is interested in culturally relevant computing, someone who is interested in uh, research that deals with gendered issues in terms of uh, collision or in terms of various health-related matters. But how do we build out uh, diversity as a space for inquiry and a space for research and scholarship that we prioritize. And so in building that rationale statement, we define diversity in that way. It wasn't just underrepresented minorities, it wasn't just gender, but it was also diversity of thought as it related to their research agenda. Because someone may come to the table who's interested in a particular area who may be a part of the majority, but their research agenda is going to add to our ability to understand uh, diversity related uh, areas and create a more inclusive and broad based strategy for the department overall. So beyond the framework, beyond the indicators, beyond the tactic, it's how do we bring these things to life. One, I have found that institutions that are committed always have to make an investment of capital. That means making a financial investment into your diversity effort. I can't tell you what that financial commitment should be. It's something that has to be determined locally based upon your priorities and the resources at hand. But what I do know is that commitment without currency is counterfeit. And we have to put 
investments into our efforts if we're going to lead uh, to diversity impact and new outcomes over time. So one is making financial investments. A second major aspect uh, requires the establishment of an accountability framework. How are we going to create a cadence of accountability for what we do? One way to create that cadence of accountability is uh, ensuring that every search committee, to stay with that faculty diversity uh, 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 example, to ensure that every search committee all goes through a training on how to cast a broad net, how to run an inclusive search, how to ensure that you are not microaggressing against candidates during the search process and that you are inviting them into an inclusive process. In addition to that, it might also entail the development of resources that would allow for you to bring in additional candidates, maybe expanding beyond three candidates to four, or maybe knowing that, hey, we got a retirement coming up in two years. How can we have some resources that will allow some early pre-recruitment to happen to maybe bring in a candidate of a diverse background a year early, two years early, and cultivating them in the process uh, by allowing uh, the institution to showcase itself to them and allowing for them to share their research agenda to the campus, maybe making a pre-recruitment happen even before the time span when you're really hiring. Another major tactic that we find, found to be very important is how do you develop post-docking? Post-docking opportunities that are financed, yes, but more than that, they're pathway to a tenure track opportunity. I know that every faculty department, every institutional department is different. At the same time too, this is one of the tried and true techniques to find strong candidates, to help them understand how to become a part of the department, and ultimately it's a pathway to bring them into a tenure track role and position. Maybe a, a disruptor from how you normally do things, but it's important to consider those ideas moving forward. So again, having a framework, having indicators, having tactics that work and that are evidence-based, making financial investments, also building in accountability techniques, all are important action steps to move forward in your agenda. Another idea that I find to be so important is how do you have financial resources that are available as an incentive, right? So we talk about these financial dollars as an incentive. So one is to have those dollars that are available to bring in, again, that additional candidate. Others is to maybe have financial dollars that incent members of the committee to go out to a conference. Uh, others maybe to purchase different lists or different databases. These resources are key to empowering departments and empowering uh, your committees to be able to make the difference and to truly cast a broad net and maximize the likelihood of attracting a diverse candidate pool and ultimately making a diverse hire. The last example I'd like to give is target of opportunity hiring efforts. This is searching for faculty candidates without a license, right? So before there's a search, if you see a diverse candidate who brings the scholarly chops that you're looking for, they bring the type of background that you think would be a great fit to the department, how can you have resources that are in place to make that hire happen now before the search occurs? Those are target of opportunity programs. We have found them to be incredibly successful. In the same instance too, the more you have that faculty rationale in the beginning, the more you risk mitigate the process, meaning that that faculty rationale becomes a part of the academic DNA of the department, of the school, of the institution. And the more you do that, the more you are creating that educational benefit statement of why diversity really matters that ultimately you want to bring to life when you bring that new faculty in and that may happen outside of a search in a target of opportunity area. In my book, Strategic Diversity Leadership and the Chief Diversity Officer, we talk about all these examples, all these techniques at a great level of depth. Thank you.